Hey everyone, welcome back. I've been using this Western Digital SN550 1TB NVMe drive for systems that I've been putting together to run benchmarks. Currently, it's in the Xeon 6 system where we're using the Kita X39 motherboard and the Intel Xeon E51650 processor. Well, the other day, I decided to check the temperature of the drive as I was copying over some games from the server so I can benchmark them. It was kinda hot and I was surprised. At least I was surprised at the time. I do know that many NVMe drives are sold with heat sinks to help keep the drives nice and cool. But it's just one of those things that, you know, kinda caught me off guard at the time. So onto the interwebs I went to see if I can find myself a decent heat sink. With a lot of things that I do purchase, cost is a really big factor on deciding on what to get. But at the same time, I didn't want to spend pennies and regret it afterwards. I did browse AliExpress and eBay, prices were pretty good for some decent heat sinks but I didn't want to wait too long to receive the item. This was due to already working on the Xeon 6 build. So onto Amazon to where I can receive stuff in just a few days. I found this set for about $13.99. Two sets are included so it's not bad for $7 a piece. The kit came with everything, heat sinks, thermal pads, screws, cleaning wipes, and even a little tiny screwdriver. The heat sink does have some decent weight to it and the fins are quite tall. They do come in black which does go pretty much with anything. The instructions are super basic, and this video is not a clear step-by-step -step tutorial of putting everything together, it's just me putting some heat sinks on an NVMe drive, that's it. Nothing fancy, so don't, don't expect a clear, precise, or concise tutorial, because it's not going to happen. <laughs> Instead of using the wipes, I did use my own isopropyl alcohol and paper towels to wipe the parts, including the drive. I did a quick test run, or just, you know, making sure that everything does fit together before actually putting it together. It's like the saying that goes, measure twice and cut once. The first part was to lay down the 0.5mm thermal pad towards the bottom of the drive, which will sit towards the bottom of that heatsink tray. The thermal pads are not sticky, so if you make a mistake, it's okay, and you can realign the pads in case you need to. Just make sure that your hands are clean prior to touching them. Afterwards, we'll lay down the 1mm pad on top of the drive, followed by the top heat sink. Then we can add the 4 screws to hold everything together. It was super easy. Now this was my first time and I'm glad it went so well. Since the pads do not use any adhesive, you could easily remove the heat sink ensemble to use on a different drive, you know, in case you decide to upgrade it. So now we'll put it back on the motherboard. The one thing I've noticed while putting this drive back in is that there are some capacitors and other motherboard components which kind of got in the way, at least for this specific motherboard from AliExpress. I was worried that I wouldn't be able to properly set the NVMe drive onto this motherboard. Fortunately, with a very, very slight wiggle, it popped in. Everything fits. Now let's take a look and see how this sucker performs. It'll just be a quick test running Crystal Disk Mark. I will have hardware monitor running at the same time. That way we're able to check the temperature of the drive. I did run the benchmark prior to installing the heatsink and then we're going to be running it again afterwards with the heatsink installed. The screen capture video that you're seeing on screen was done by using NVIDIA's screen capture tool. So keep in mind that the system is recording the video directly to the drive that we're running the benchmark on. This may cause a slight drop in the read and write speeds or performance of the Western Digital SN550 drive, so that's just kind of like a heads up. I could have used a capture card to record the screen onto a different computer, but this isn't a read and write benchmark, it's just to compare the temperature of the drive with and without the heatsink. And as a quick note, it was around 80 degrees Fahrenheit or about 27 degrees Celsius in my office. Without the heatsink, we do see temperatures averaging in the 60s. There was a moment where it did spike to 71, but it was just for a really quick moment. With the heatsink installed, the temperatures are a lot lower, they're in the 40s, and it stays there, so that's, that's pretty awesome. Plus, this test was done on an open test bench, no fans were blowing onto the motherboard, the CPU cooler was sitting parallel to the drive. So overall, I think this is a win. My conclusion would be that if your M.2 drive doesn't have a heatsink, go ahead and spend a few dollars to stick one on. This has given me a new itch to scratch, which is to see what an RGB heatsink would look like on one of these types of drives. So I guess it's time to go look on AliExpress to see what's available. In the meantime, I do want to thank you for watching. Take care and have a great day.